Okay, Gerald McCraney, you play Dr. K on NBC's This Is Us. Um, such a breakout, buzzworthy show uh, from last season. How you've, you've done, you know, you've worked in, in the business for, for a number of years. How does This Is Us compare to what you've done before? Well, as you said, it's, it's a breakout series. The thing that is you know, delightful to me is that a series that's just strictly a family drama is a breakout series. There are no gimmicks to it. There's no, you know, they're, they're not uh, exploding the envelope. They pushed it a little, but that's it. And I think it's, you know, the people are just ready for good family drama, and that's the key. It's well written, it's well executed. And I think people like watching good material, no matter what form it's in, no matter what genre it is. Is it well done? this one is and people have taken to it. I think your character in particular has made some fans cry, um, <laughs> especially maybe maybe me a little bit. Uh, uh, how did you get involved in this show going back to the beginning? I had worked with John and Glenn who are two of the executive producers and they directed the pilot episode. I worked with them before on a movie and they asked me to come play this role and you know, they were such a delight to work with on a movie. I didn't even I didn't even have to really read the script. I went through the formality of it, just to say that I had. But you know, with those guys, if they ask me to come do something, I'm going to do it. Mm. Uh, I don't want to jinx anything. You are earning some Emmy buzz here for the role, and you know, after working in the business for a few years now, what would it mean? A few. <laughs> <laughs> what would it mean to finally get that first uh, career nomination? Well, it would be nice. I'm, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath for it. You never know how those things are going to work. Uh, but the thing that's good for me is to be part of a show that's getting this kind of notice that, uh, um, that not only are people tuning in, uh, so much so that it got a two-season pickup, mm -hmm. but that it's getting the critical acclaim that it's getting, and well-deserved, too. And it's just it's great to be a part of that. Are you getting recognized now by, by some younger folks? Because I know families watch this together. Yeah, well, I'm getting now recognized by three generations of people, which <laughs> is a little disconcerting to realize that that can happen. But yeah, it's, it's delightful to still be a part of the mix. I think that Emmy Buzz kind of started from that moment you gave the speech in the pilot about making uh, lemonade from lemons. As an actor, when you read that kind of a monologue, is that just like an actor's dream to get yes, that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. This is the kind of thing you relish mm -hmm. as an actor, is to have a speech like that or a scene like that. The thing that really um, made me extremely happy was not only was that monologue written, it didn't get messed with. Mm -hmm. Nobody abbreviated and said there's a lot of talking there. You know, can't we chop this up a little bit and put some other stuff in there? They left it alone. and, and they let it breathe. All the transitions that, that Milo and I did are there in the piece, and they, they let it play. And all too often, I think, especially in television, people don't trust that. Mm -hmm. They, they want to put something else in there to keep things moving along. Well, they moved along because the words that were written were so good. Um, that particular scene was with, with Milo one-on-one. -on -one. What, what kind of an actor is he uh, to work with? He's terrific um, because he came to work primarily. That's, that's the first thing. He's very, very good at what he does. But I think almost as important as being talented and being prepared is that he doesn't take himself seriously doing it. I mean, he... he He's like me to a certain extent because we both realize how lucky we are to be doing what we're doing and making a living at it. You know, and, and he, he is one of the most giving actors I've been around. My old acting teacher uh, used to say, have you ever noticed that when somebody thinks you did a really good job, they say he gave a good performance. Mm -hmm. And that's the essence of it is to give, not only to the audience, but to your fellow actors. And Milo's very good at that. Mm. And you also had some scenes with Mandy Moore, and she used to be a, a, a music star, I guess she still is, before yes, coming to TV. she still is. But, um, 
Not so much anymore. She's too busy doing this. Right. And for good reason. I mean, yeah. this is a great role for her as well. Um, what was it like working with Mandy on, on the set? Delightful. Just delightful. And again, this is one of the reasons that it's such a pleasure to go to work on this show. The people in it are just such good people. It's, it's interesting that that's what this show is about. Is good people having to deal with some hard things sometimes, but dealing with them and doing the best they can. And it, that the cast is populated by people exactly like that, who are just good, decent people who um, enjoy coming to work and that therefore make it a joy for us to come to work. The show takes place in a lot of different timelines. Um, remind me, the last time we saw your character, it was, was he kind of mourning his, his wife? Yes, the, the last time you saw my character is uh, it's a revisit to the day that the triplets were to be born. Mm -hmm. And what led up to the, the meeting of Dr. K with the family. And uh, what he had been through that led him to the point that where he delivered that long speech in the hallway. And um, I, again, I saw that script and I was just delighted. I, that was I, a good one too. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> What they gave me to do in that one was just, it was a joy to do. Just a joy. Um, I don't know this, but I would have done it for free. <laughs> we'll cut that part out. Okay. No, uh, we're not a spoiler site here at Gold Derby, but is there any, do you know any teasers about season two that you can make? Nothing. I don't have a clue. Do you know I don't know whether I'm, back? I have no idea at this point. I have not seen a word. We hope so. We hope so. No, but uh, nothing to talk about. Well, Chris has some, some other questions here. Yes, Marcus sir. asked you some about, uh, of course, this is us, but we talked, he said a little bit about your career. I want to talk a little bit more about that, starting with some recent stuff. Just quick thoughts on each one. House of Cards. Always a delight to work on, especially when I get to work with Kevin, which you know I did uh, this past year. He's, when I first started doing that show, the first time I had scenes with him, um, the, the, the way I describe the experience is a guy who's been sort of an athlete finding out he's been drafted into the NFL and the quarterback is Peyton Manning. That's what it felt like. Was, uh, and you better bring your A game because he's gonna insist on it. And there's this wonderful, friendly, competitive thing going on with Kevin. And it's, it's, it's great to mix it up. It does seem like a boxing match whenever he's with uh, opposite anybody. Yeah, and he likes a good fight. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's fun to do. It's fun to work on those sorts of things with a guy like that. And he's, he definitely is that. You know, uh, if you didn't come to work, Kevin can be intimidating because he's so damn good. And, but if you did your homework and you came prepared, you're going to have fun working with that guy. You play bad guy roles, you play good guy roles. One of the good ones recently uh, in the two Dolly Parton movies. Yeah. We just had her here uh, oh, did you? a couple of uh, weeks ago. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She really yeah. is. Uh, what was your experience working on those? Well, I didn't get to work with Dolly on either one of those, but the guy who produced it, Sam Haskell, is an old buddy, mm -hmm. old Miss alum. Right. Uh, so that part of it is always fun. Um, but I've met Dolly. On a couple of occasions, one year uh, Delta and I were co-grand marshals of the parade, opening the season at Dollywood, and uh, but and she came on and guested on Designing Women at one time. So we've known Dolly for some time. Always a delight to be around her and playing her grandfather. So you got to get it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope I did. She tells me that I did. But. Deadwood. Yeah. You were all just one season, right? But it was such a memorable. I was in the last episode of one season and all of the right. next one, but it was fascinating. I was supposed to come in and do that one appearance and then maybe next year do a three-story arc. And uh, David just kept saying, could you do another set? <laughs> sure, and it wound up being the rest of that whole season. That was one of the more frightening villains on the show, a, a, a full of frightening villains. Because he wasn't your typical villain. No, no. And the, the way I approached it, and David sort of let me do this, is there's nothing villainous about this guy. You know, he just wants what he wants, and you know, you're in the way. 
you worked with a and, lot of and, and the, the, one of the takes that I had on it was he regarded human beings as just other pieces of mining equipment. Mm -hmm. That's all. You work with a lot of great people on there, but I've got to ask, an actor's actor just like you, I would say, was Powers Booth, who just yes. passed away recently. I loved Powers. Um, he and I, one weekend uh, after we uh, finished shooting on Deadwood, he and I went up to a place a little bit north of there and went quail hunting together and spent the weekend. And he was just a great guy to hang out with. Good old Texas boy. And that's the thing that, but one of the things I dearly loved about Powers is as good as he was, as often as he worked, and as successful as he was in this business, he never got to be anything more than a good old Texas boy. And was the, I, when we went quail hunting, you're supposed to wear something that's blaze orange when you're out in the field with a shotgun like that. Well, his blaze orange was University of Texas ball cap because they had just won the championship. So there keep being rumors about maybe getting everybody back on Deadwood for a movie or a TV reunion or I something. Know, I don't know how it's going to work because all the people are off doing so other busy. things. So it's going to be a hard thing to get them all available at the same moment in time to do it. But I think if the rest of them are like me, you'll drop pretty much whatever you could drop to go work with David again. Mm -hmm. Because again, the, the writing is just so brilliant that um, it makes acting a pleasure. And I've done a lot of things where you have to sort of strain to make the material better than it is. You know, we've all done those things where you have to pay the rent and you, you want it to be good, so you find yourself acting your left foot off. And with guys like that, you don't have to. It's such a pleasure just to be the actor and not have to fix anything, not make any suggestions, not any of that stuff. I would watch Deadwood with a dictionary next to me because there were so many words that I, I, I would pause it. I don't know what that word is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, David is, uh, I mean, he's a stone genius. Uh, but the depth of his knowledge on so many different subjects is just phenomenal. You mentioned designing women. I think people real think you were on more than you were. Yeah. It was just a couple. That, that was it. I was on a couple of episodes of that and one episode of Women of the House. But they, they think that character was a regular. <laughs> he wasn't. You enjoyed that, though. I loved it. Well, obviously for good reason. That's uh, that's where Delta and I got together. That's thirty years ago. We just uh, we just spent a month in England celebrating that we've been together for thirty years. I got to ask about Simon and Simon. That was one that I grew up on. I yeah. love the old Private Eye shows. I do too. And they run. They still run that on uh, one of the older I will, channels. Delta and I both. We will sit down and watch Maltese Falcon over and over again. Because we just like the show. We kind of know how it's going to end at this point, but you like watching it over. But you're going to say you watch again. Simon and Simon over again. Well, we do that too. <laughs> we do that too. I'm glad to hear you admit that because some people say, no, I never watch my old stuff. But. Well, we watch it, but I keep wondering who that guy is who can do all those stunts. <laughs> no. So if they did a reunion of that one, it wouldn't be everything. It wouldn't be exactly the same in terms of. I don't think it would be exactly the same <laughs> at all. I mean, I'm dealing with my aches and pains. Uh, uh, Jameson's dealing with store-bought knees at this point, so, you know, it would be slightly different at this point. You did a lot of guest roles, especially before Simon and Simon, but one that, as I looked at your list and reminded, a show I've probably seen dozens of times is Rockford Files. Oh, I bet James Garner was just your type of guy. He was. He was a hoot. And again, took the work very seriously and himself not at all and would much rather sit around hanging out with the crew than go to his trailer and deal with executives or publicity. You should pardon the expression, this is my publicist <laughs> over here I just <laughs> referred to. But uh, Jimmy was the sort of guy who just wanted to do the work and hang out with the guys and you know, uh, have some fun while you're doing it. And yeah, he was my kind of guy. And I, it's interesting, um, I ran into him at a doctor's office of all places several months before he died, but within the year. And I'm so glad that I did because I got the chance to thank him for all the stuff that he taught me, not necessarily about acting, although you learn about acting when you work with good actors, but about how to be a gentleman on the set and how to deal with adversity, you know, how to deal with things that you disagreed with without being 
disagreeable yourself and just those little things and I, you know I he's one of the guys that when I could I'd get in his hip pocket and stay there for as long as I could and, and soak up a little of that wisdom well, you're one of those guys who are really pulling for you on uh, this year's Emmys. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.